right, everybody. Welcome back. Took the phone call. Uh, awesome people. You know, it's like nothing better than sitting with a mother and a son and just talking about daily life and the struggles that we go through. And How to live each day because when you are comfortable around somebody you don't have that that moment where you go I'm embarrassed well good if you're embarrassed I'm gonna help you get out of that because I've, I've done it I've lived it. it made no sense of being embarrassed what are you embarrassed everybody's embarrassed of something you know Somebody might tell you, I don't like the way you chew when you chew your food. Okay, well, who are you? If it bothers you, then go sit somewhere else. They, some people just can't help. And now you're giving them a complex. We are not to do that. Accept someone's faults for what they are. It's who the people are. I say it all the time, God wired me this way. You don't like the way I am to take it up with take it up with the master creator, not me. I, you know, if I had it my way, would I look the way I look? No. Would, would I be a chiseled out whatever your thoughts are? You know, some women want to be that Barbie type. Some men want to be Lou Ferrigno. Some men want to be these big bodybuilder guys with these veins sticking all out, look like they got snakes running out. Gross. What are you going to do when you get old if you make it to the, the 60, 70 years old and say you can't do it anymore? And that stuff starts to flab. I mean, yeah, look at look, look at these movie stars. Look, look at these people that's trained. And look at the enhancements and all the stuff they take just to keep themselves looking a certain way. Is it worth that much to win a competition? Well... Today's competition that you're going to enter is a relay. And the thing of it is, you don't have to run fast, you don't have to run slow. Matter of fact, the slower you go, you're going to win. Because you're transforming your life. You're taking today's time, today's life, you're taking what's happening, and you're allowing Jesus to mold and sculpt you. You're allowing Him to prune off the stuff out of your life. You're allowing Him to take back things that was put into your life that shouldn't there. You're allowing him to take what you are, where you're stuck at. See, sometimes we get stuck in life, we get stuck somewhere, and it becomes fearful, and we don't know how to escape it. Well, today's the day we escape it. Today's the day we face fear head on, because what do you fear? Are you gonna sit there Think about, well, someone's, hold on, I'm trying to see where I'm at. Are you going to sit there and think about, well, someone's going to come in and take something from my house. So you're never going to leave your house? Somebody wants it bad enough, they're going to come in and take it anyways. It's just a matter of if they're going to hurt you in the process or not. That's, the, that's today's time we live in. Because we live in a day and a time where the devil puts himself in where we're at in life. The devil takes that and uses it. You know, I used years ago. I grew up thinking it was bad luck to walk under a ladder. A black cat crosses your path, you'd make a cross on the window. And one day I'm sitting there driving and this cat comes and I'm looking at this cat and I'm looking at the concept of thinking. I'm making a cross on a window. Am I not asking Jesus now to protect me? You don't even realize some of the superstitions that we go through. Walking under a ladder. Okay, 
Walk on your ladder. What's going to happen? Doesn't necessarily mean if something goofy happens 20 minutes later, it probably was already going to happen. You can't blame it on walking under a ladder. You know them support lines or telephone poles that cable things that run down and they're anchored to the ground? People would say the same thing about that. Don't walk under that. We'd mow the cemeteries. Don't go over a grave. Bad luck. Means you're going to die. I'm mowing a cemetery. There's no way I cannot step on a grave. How is that even not possible? You ever walk through a cemetery? Going to see a grave? Personally, I don't see the sense in it. I, used, I went to my grandmother's a few times and it brought more pain to me than it did anything else. So I stopped going. Doesn't mean I don't love my grandmother. I love my grandmother. I loved her. But she's not there. It's a piece of dirt. It's a piece of whatever your tombstone's made out of. Trust me, I've seen plenty of tombstones in my day. And I've seen plenty of that Never, nobody ever comes and visits. Guess we didn't love them that much now, did we? Well, heck, we didn't even love them enough in life to go see them when we had opportunities when they were alive. So if we didn't love them, then why all of a sudden now is this going to change? We're going to love them more now. Because they're in the grave and I'm going to go cry at a tombstone. Well, maybe you're crying at a tombstone over, over regrets or guilt. I don't know. I never was one big fan of a show of people going to funerals and seeing people cry and carry on and put on this big scene. Well, are you there for the person or are you there to be the main attraction? Uh, I think the person laying there doesn't really care either way. Anything, all that goes through my head is I want to go. I don't want to be here. We allow fear. See, the devil puts things in your life and he lets you think your reputation Oh, I gotta be a certain way. I gotta look a certain way. Well, okay. Some of these girls, these young, these young girls, they go to tanning beds over and 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 over. And over. Be, after a while, your body starts looking a funky color because it's not normal. Your body is not supposed to go to a tan. I've, I've been to tanning beds, and I tell you what. I never, it's weird. I put the lotion stuff on, the enhanced stuff, and all this garbage. I will, I, for some reason, I do not, I, I don't turn tan coming out of those things. I just think it's useless. Now, I could stand outside each day, and I'll, I'll tan dark tan. Go figure. So, let me get this straight. Man's way sucks. God's way is worse. The sun that God created. Wait a minute. Are we talking about the earth, the earth sun or the sun sun? I don't know. You pick. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? The Lord's glory is bright enough for me. Because he has the Father in him and he is of the Father. There is no peace on earth that I can get than being in that presence. Prayer. That's why I say prayer is the most important thing in my day. Before I put my feet on that crown, I, I say, Lord, wherever the devil is, when I put my, both of my feet on that ground, I want it to quake all the way to where he's at. And as it's shaking, I want him to know I'm not that scared little boy anymore. I'm not under his authority anymore. I'm under the most high authority. I have no worries. I have no doubts. I have no needs. If or if I do, you know them before me. You will give it when I need it. You will give me what I need, not what I think I need. I'm not 
not even capable of thinking about what I need, but you are. And I accept that in my life. I accept you in my life. And I accept what you're going to do in my life. Not what I think I can do in my life. Because I can't, I'm not even capable of doing what I think I can or can't do. Because my mind of thinking, I go into the wrong areas. I have the wrong thoughts. It fails. And when it fails, I feel worse. But I tell you, when I fail at something, it's because I forgot to pray about it. I told you at the beginning of the other video, at the end, at the end of this one, I'm going to announce something that last week, sometimes in them trials and tribulations and things we go through, the Lord speaks and it's not the first time. He's been speaking this a couple times. And um, I remember praying, I think it was Monday before I left, we were praying and I, and I was going to speak it out loud and the Lord told me to wait till Wednesday. I don't know why Wednesday. I didn't ask him. I just, I'm obedient. Okay. Again, I have the right fear, not the wrong fear. I don't go down the road and going, well, I might hit that pole today when I'm backing up. I'm not thinking about that pole because I'm not backing up yet. When it's time for me to back up, I take the time and look and get out and look if I have to. That's life. Speed limit's 50. Okay, well, I'll drop down to 46. Let the people go around me. It's up to you on how you let Jesus control your day. I don't want the steering wheel. I think it's Carrie Underwood, Jesus take the wheel. I don't want the steering wheel. I'll stand in the back and in the back of it, I'll let, I'll pull the ropes, I'll pull the sails up. I don't care what I gotta do. I just, I'm not capable of controlling my life. If I was, I would never have been in the places I was at in the beginning. In the beginning of childhood and things that happened, it could have, could have, could have destroyed me. But I believe somewhere down the line somebody was praying for me. I really do. And I believe somewhere down that long journey I've always been in and out thinking about stuff and then I got into the phase where I was going to figure out why there are so many different religions. Baptist, this, Methodist, Catholic, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, you name it. So I walk in there and I sit down and I'm listening and I'm going, you know there's really not much difference between Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons. There's really not. I mean honestly, there's not a whole lot of difference. And that's why I'm kind of surprised when they come against each other a little bit. I'm like, it's pretty much the same. So, now we have to go and go, what, where are we in life? What are your fears? Really think about your fears. Are you afraid to grab a knife out of there to cut up something and you put on cut-proof hand gloves and stuff when you're cutting a piece of bread because you're terrified of knives? Well, are you terrified when you crack an egg and that a chicken's going to come out instead of an, an egg yolk? Uh, might be a little silly, but uh, who knows? Somebody might have that fear. It's still fear, right? figure out where we're at. We gotta figure out what we're doing and how we're doing it. Why? We gotta figure really figure out life. The only way to figure that out is to face fear head on. Because we have the authority, we have the power, we have that ability to 
truly defeat the devil. I fear where God's going to send me and I live a life of that. I may be in a, in a situation where somebody might walk in there and just open up fire and a gun and that's it. My time's done. Okay. Well, I may crawl out of this truck and fall and bust my head open and nobody sees me and, and I pass away. Okay. My time's done. What if I get out of the bathtub and slip and fall and bust myself open? Okay. That might happen too. What if are you tired of hearing what ifs yet? Because that's all fear is. A bunch of what ifs. How do you go through life all day long thinking what if? What if? What if? What if? Well, what if's got to stop eventually. We have to really get into the focus of life where we go, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to just run up and jump into the water. And whatever happens, happens. Here you go, Jesus. Today, I leave fear behind. And I'm going to live your life the way that you have my life. And if I'm living your life, I know I'm good. Because you were obedient to the Father. You rose up. You moved when the Father told you to move. And I know I can live that way. Because you promised that you would take care of me. So if you're going to take care of me, I don't have to live in fear. All I have to do is understand what you want me to do. I know I gotta pray. I know I gotta spend time praying to the Father. I know I gotta spend time praying to you. I know I gotta spend time in the Word. How much time do you waste through the day? Oh, I don't have time in the morning. I don't wanna set my alarm clock for an hour early. I'm tired. What time I go to bed? Well, what, what's keeping you awake? Do you have children? What time do your children go to bed? What do you do for the time your children go to bed and dishes are done, everything's done, your household's clean, and you're sitting there with your spouse? What are you doing in that time? Are you talking or are you on your phone? Okay, let's just say both. Let's just say you're on the phone, you're talking about stuff you're looking at, you're watching videos, you know, you're watching this this uh, Nelson guy on YouTube and you're going and talking about this guy's lost his marbles. I can't believe what did you hear what he just said? <laughs> it's just a test to see if anybody's paying attention. Right? <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, sometimes we got to laugh. You know, we just got to laugh. And, and hopefully sometimes in these videos somebody starts laughing and makes you laugh. I laugh at myself all day long. You know, and it's okay. Child life. I got Star Wars spaceships in my garage I, I play with. When I go out there to grab something out of the deep freezer or I grab something off the pantry shelf in the garage, uh, if I'm over by the where they're at, I'll pick them up and I'll pull Han Solo out of the, out of the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> walk him across the, the the terrain and act like he's searching for something it's okay to be a child it's okay to sit and just laugh and joke about something and have those moments where you just don't care you dance a silly dance because you feel like dancing but you can't dance I know I can't dance I don't get up on the dance floor, that's for sure. Not that I'm embarrassed. I just don't see the sense of going up there trying to dance when I can't dance. Well, you said can, it's not a word. Well, it's not a word. I know 
it's impossible. Unless Jesus heals me right now, I'm going to be in pain for quite a bit of time afterwards. I know my limitations of when the pain's going to start setting in and I stop doing stuff before it gets there. Because I know sometimes pushing it, the after effect of it, it's terrible. Well, the after effect of not fearing God and living in a devil's realm, the after effects is hell. Thoughts that capture your mind is fear. It's you're allowing yourself to be imprisoned. Is it worth it? Sometimes when you just let it go, you let fear go. And you put that toe in the water and you go, that's not so bad. And all of a sudden you see a fin pop up out of the water. Whoa, there's a shark. And you take off running. Then you realize as you stumble over a lounge chair, you realize you're at the pool. And then it's six feet deep. How is there a shark in the water? Well, I don't know. Let's go back and look. Oh, it was just a little Jimmy down there. He got himself with one of them shark kits and he's swimming around trying to scare people. Boy, I feel stupid, but now I gotta go get stitches because I cut myself open. Because I ran in fear by not thinking first. What if I didn't fall and get stitches and I took off running? Well, eventually you're gonna have to slow down enough to open that gate. Are you gonna get hurt? Are you gonna break a gate? Either way, you're probably still gonna get hurt. Are you going to be extremely embarrassed when you fall backwards and fall down and hit your head, maybe knock yourself out and people are standing over when you come through? Well, that's another fear. What if, what if that happens? What if it don't? You ever think about what if it doesn't happen? Tomorrow, I start speaking about tomorrow, today. Lord, I know I'm halfway through my day. What time is it anyway? It's almost one o'clock. Eastern time. Because I just transferred from Central to Eastern. One cool thing about Central and Eastern time, you can, I could be I could be Batman in Central Time over here. I gotta be Nelson. Nobody sees me, right? If you don't if I if I come home and you're my neighbor and I'm person like you see on YouTube and then all of a sudden you look out your window and I'm running around with a bat cape on and chasing chasing a dog and I got him dressed up like the Riddler you're probably going to think I've lost my mind the neighbor across the street you might talk about it man you see what he does yeah a little weird isn't it to you not to me I don't live my life what's what you think. I live my life how, how I feel. I'm not fearful for what my neighbor thinks. I'm not fearful for what they're going to say about me. I used to. I used to live that exhausting life that I had to look a certain way. I had to go in the gym and work out and be able to lift. Well, that took me taking pre-workout, post-workout. took me stuff in the middle, enhancements and all this stuff, before you know it, man, I'm like making protein shakes, making this, doing that, and I'm like, good night, man, taking vitamins, taking this, and before you know it, man, that's a workout in itself, but I had to look a certain way, I was never happy, I was never fast enough, I had my sister one time, I said, at the end of the street, I was just got done running and I was doing my cool down walk because I would slowly start to gra graduate and slow myself down running to get, let my heart start slowing itself down to where, where I could get to a fast walk into a slow pace and allow my heartbeat to slow, as, slow it down in the right way, the same way as I would do before I take off running. I would start momentum, building my heart rate up and then I would just take off and run. So she came up one day and she's like rolls down the window and she goes, what are you doing? You want to ride home? I was like, uh, it's right down there, <laughs> like three blocks from here. Like I can literally see the apartment from here. 
And she, like I said, at that time she lived two houses down from her. And uh, she goes, how fast do you think you can run? I said, I don't know. It's not like I got a clock. I can track myself how fast I run. She goes, well, take off running and I'll pull up to you and I'll see how fast you stupid the point of it is I didn't start off being able to run hours and run fast I built the speed up I built that endurance I learned when the big hills were coming to pace myself and then burn out what I needed to do to make it up. That's how you are with Jesus. You gotta learn to pace yourself. You gotta learn to give it to Him. So He doesn't expect you to be perfect when you come. He doesn't expect you to be uh, clean and, and you know, I'm, I'm good. No, you're not. Nobody's good. Can't trust anybody. Well, I'm glad you asked. Can you trust me? To a point. Am I going to disappoint you? Probably. Am I going to say something that might offend you? Don't know why, but probably will. So if, if you look at the equation of all that, then man's going to disappoint you. Well, Jesus won't disappoint you. Jesus is going to be the living proof. He's going to be the living example. He's going to be the living word in our lives. We don't have to fear that Jesus is going to disappoint us. The devil is going to disappoint you. The devil is going to bring you so much fear, so much craziness in life. You get so lost up in it. You get so lost in how much fear and how much nonsense the devil brings into your life. You don't even know where you start or begin or end or where anything is in your life is so unorganized. It would take you a week just to find out where you filed one single piece of paper in a filing cabinet that had no files, no nothing, but one file empty and you put a piece of paper in there. You will open every drawer and you will feel overwhelmed even though there's only one file and that one piece of paper you put is in that one file in an empty filing cabinet and you still won't be able to find it. Because that's what the devil does to you. You ever go to look for something and you pass right over it? You can't, it just happened to me. I'm looking for everything and I'm like, well, I don't know. I can't find it. <laughs> Sometimes we're quick to go, well, I didn't touch it. Well, I, I, I'm not saying. Sometimes maybe we should just wait to say something. But our, then again, how are you going to stop a reaction of something that happened? Because sometimes you may go, well, I didn't say you did. And the way that you say it, because you're anxious, you're nervous, you're trying to find something. But instead of us thanking it out, going, right, I, I know you didn't take it. And do it in a calmly manner, but no. Now somebody can take that in the wrong way and go, I can't believe you just talked to me like that. Well, because you forget about how you would respond in a situation like that. See, see how fast we are to judge and to be in that put somebody else now in a fearful thing because then they get to the point what we call walking on eggshells around someone but Jesus corrects us Jesus makes you do you just gotta allow him into your life you gotta allow him to take control of your life you gotta allow that stress to be taken away from you but you also gotta understand he's gonna prove stuff out of your life that's no good for you it may be movies, it may be games, it may be games on your phone, it may be so much time you're spending on your phone. You know, when you pray out loud, the devil hears you. That's why he says, come to that secret place and pray, because you're in thought. Wasn't it? You know, I, I think sometimes when these people say that meditation is this and meditation is that, um, I really would like to go within. You explain to me when you're in that secret, quiet place 
and you're just sitting there concentrating on Jesus and nothing else. Can you give me give me the word for me sitting down? I'm relaxed. I have no other thoughts. No other thoughts in my head. And I start speaking to Jesus. And I sit quiet until he answers me. No thoughts. I'm not thinking of nothing. I'm concentrating on him. My eyes are closed. And I'm relaxed. And I'm in a deep breath. Tell me what word describes what I'm doing. I bet you you're going to come up with meditation. Because I don't. I'm not saying meditation's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's meditation. That's how I go into the spiritual realm. So I guess that's, that's the devil. The devil's taking me into heaven. The devil's letting me see the garden. The devil's letting me see the people. The devil's letting me see animals. I seriously highly doubt this. I really do. Because if you're saying that's true, Again, I'm going to fold this Bible up, and I'm going to fold it up, and I'm going to put it back here, and I'm never going to open it again. I'm never going to speak of Jesus again, because it's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Because serving Jesus, then, is serving the devil. Instead, the devil wants you around people that are thinking the way that you think. I say it, I'm going to say it again. When I, when I, was, in a, when I was drinking... I didn't go into the popcorn store and say, I have some caramel popcorn. Uh, yeah, no, so do, 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 do you want your same bottle of whiskey? Yeah. Okay, you're calling it popcorn these days. Well, no, I really wanted some popcorn. Well, you're in a whiskey store. I mean, you're in a liquor store. See how foolish things can get the same because we fear the wrong fears we allow fear to control us we allow the devil to control us we allow the devil to keep adding links to our fear tomorrow he's going to make you fear of driving through a construction zone oh it's too narrow and he's going to make you start feeling that claustrophobic Oh, I can't drive through this. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. You're going to have a nervous panic attack just trying to drive through a four, four sections little construction zone and you, and you think it looks like seven miles long. Now don't get me wrong. There is some construction zones that do. I drove through one the other day. 12 miles. 12 miles of nonsense. I'm like, and then you get through there, you drive about a mile, then there's another one. They're working on this. This is closed. I, you know, I'm thinking, uh, why didn't you just close the whole stupid thing off and keep us in one lane? Because one mile now, everybody's got to get back over, and here we are, gang, being jammed up. Well, how many of you fear when you go to the gas pumps and you start pumping it, and you're thinking in your head, well, I only have this much money? I can only put ten dollars in, and I gotta go buy my ten dollars, twelve dozen, my twelve eggs of uh, what dozen? I couldn't think of it. My dozen of eggs for ten dollars. That is the bird flu. That's the reason why. I still remember when the Lord gave me that bird flu. I'm like, they're gonna blame it on the bird flu. And we believe it. Well, the bird flu's over. Why in the hell the prices ain't coming down? You know why? They want to control your dollar. But I'm not fearful of it. Instead, I go in there, Lord, thank you for giving me the finances to pay for these expensive eggs. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> I can't believe I'm about to say this. Do you ever eat an egg and you appreciate it, what the, what the chicken did by laying the egg? Like, you thank God for creating a chicken so we can eat an egg? Do you ever... You know, it's like going to the gas pump. Lord, look at this. Complaining about it isn't going to fix it. 
I just thank God for giving us the ability to be able to pay for it, to have a full tank of gas. If you think that's bad, when I'm on about a half a tank, maybe a little under, it's about 450 to 500 bucks, depending on the price. And that's only half a tank. Full tank, when the price is way up there, yeah, it was, I was, one time I pumped like $970. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I don't gotta pay that. Owner operators right now, I feel bad for them. They're struggling. But yet they're keeping America moving. Are they fearful? Well, if they, I hope not. Are they wanting to sell their drugs? Probably. Or they're thinking I'm making the biggest mistake in my life? Probably. Or what if they're not? What if they go, well, yeah, I, I knew this was coming and I started inc increasing what I'm going to haul for and say, no, when you're talking to these brokers, no, I need, I need a little bit more because it's going to cost me this much of fuel to get that load there. So I need a little bit more per, per mile or off the, the share. Some of them will give you a, a certain take off of the, the whole entire amount. Well... Devil's willing to make deals with you all night and day. If you don't fear him. Oh. You, you like caramels? Oh, wait till you see the caramels I got over here at Betty's Candy Shop. All oh, the finest. Oh, there's even some with some salt on it. Oh, they, I, she's got some of the chocolate on them. Oh my goodness. You're just going to be so happy. Caramel apple, no problem. I'll give it to you. Really? You walk in there. Hi, Betty. Oh, hi. The first time in here? Yeah. Where's your caramels? I don't have caramels. You don't have chocolate covered caramels? You don't have this, this special salty stuff you put on the caramels? No. What do you have? Oh, I got taffy over there. I got some cookies down here. I got some donuts, some little cakes, some cupcakes. What would you like? I don't want caramels. Well, I don't have caramels. Well, yeah, I was told you had caramels. Come on, Betty, where's the caramel? I, I really don't have caramels. I melt some caramel down to, to make this particular 